So as the regulars of my channel will know, I have fallen deep into the world of the rubber hose cartoon style, and nowadays Electra Swing comes with the territory. And it blew my mind. It is some of the best music I have ever heard. And on this amazing Electra Swing journey, I discovered an amazing series that combines so many things I love. Clover. Clover follows the story of Kel, a young girl with dreams of becoming a musician, who after being devastated from losing her grandfather and falling into depression from being told her dreams will never come true, attempts to drown herself. As Kel is in the water, she meets with the three ghosts in the border between life and death. George, my beloved, Brenda, and Dave who each tell her the story of their lives, the hurdles they endured when they were alive, and how they persevered to the bitter end. Each of them has a story that aligns in some way to Kel's personal anguish. George losing the love of his life, never ceasing to be in love with her. Brenda dreaming to be a dance star, but losing the ability to move at all, and Dave struggling to become a popular cartoonist as he's shunned by everyone around him. In the very end, the three of them explain how even though they suffered, they pressed on and continued no matter what, and encouraged Kel to find the strength to keep living on. It is a beautiful, tear-jerking story set to music that slaps, mixed with an adorable rubber hose cartoon style. Now that you know what Clover is about, I can now dive into my theories and also point out stuff you might have missed if you weren't paying attention. The first most relevant theory is the theory that George was romantically involved with Brenda. In 100 years, you can see the girl who George was in love with, however, she's drawn without eyes and long hair. This hairstyle highly resembles Brenda's look, as well as her overall body type. Another thing to note is that in the photo George has of her, she's wearing a hat with flowers on it. This exact hat can be seen in Brenda's house and still dancing. This next one is considered a stretch, but personally, I don't think it is. In Still Dancing, while Brenda is performing, you can see the silhouette of a man with a pointed nose, just like George's. And then there's Brenda's daughter, Susie. She looks like a perfect mix of George and Brenda, and it has also been noted that within George's theme, Gentleman, and Brenda's theme, Sugar Honey Iced Tea, Susie's name is spelled out in bar and binary codes. As for Susie herself, I believe she plays a big role in the whole story as the one connecting everyone together. Most likely, Brenda left George because she was either A, wanting to pursue her career in tap dancing with no clue she was pregnant, or B, because she knew she was pregnant with Susie and didn't want George to be bothered with a child. Somewhere along the line as Susie got older, she must have decided to meet with George as she knew soon she'd be losing one parent. She probably wanted to ease the pain a little bit by building a relationship with her father. This could be why George would be attending one of Brenda's performances. After discovering he has a daughter and realizing the person he's so in love with is going to pass away soon, he probably wanted to spend as much time with her as possible and play a bigger role in Susie's life. After Brenda passed away, Susie met Dave when one of his drawings blew her way. These two fell in love with each other and got married, and if you pay attention in 100 years, you can see the woman who took George to the hospital when he had his heart attack is sitting with a child who resembles Dave. I'm positive this woman is Susie because she wears the same bow in her ponytail that Susie had in her hair as a child. So it's possible this was just planned to be a normal day of George spending time with his daughter and grandson as he reminisced in the times he had with Brenda wishing he could have had more time with her before she passed, and then suddenly getting struck with a heart attack. Of course, his daughter would rush to his side. And let me just say, if I'm correct on who Susie is, then DANG THIS WOMAN IS A TROOPER! My next theory is that Susie and Dave had a second son somewhere along the line, because when Cal's parents appear on screen for the short second in Help Me, her father highly resembles George, which would make sense since Susie is his father. I think it's easy to tell that Susie is Kel's grandmother when you see her in a striped shirt, but it was probably harder to tell that Dave was her grandfather when he lost his mustache and most of his weight due to being sick in the hospital. But if you pay close attention to when Kel enters his room, there's a poster of Wubby on the wall. It's possible that all these years of working hard on cartooning led to years of overworking, resulting in Dave's poor health. Now since Kel never met George or Brenda, she was more attached to Dave's ghost than the others, but she felt a close connection to each of them since they were all family. And while the scene where Dave holds Kel in his arms and cuddles her is probably one of the cutest things I've seen this year, it further proved the theory for me. 
She seemed specifically attached to Dave, as if she knew it was her grandpa, and in the beginning of living on, she's sobbing at his grave, and when she notices herself beginning to become a completely white ghost like the rest of them, she smiles and looks at the grave, because she wants to be with her grandfather. And then Dave was telling her she needed to live on. He was the only one whose words made her cry. Being that these three ghosts are her family who love her so much, they wanted her to continue living. And Kel woke up in her hospital room to be greeted by Susie, her grandmother, feeling at peace and ready to live on.